As we move slowly into spring and about to get outside more and more, it's a good time to start talking ticks again. Joining us now, Upstate's Global Health Director, Dr. Stephen Thomas. Dr. Thomas, always good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Good to see you, Jeff. Um, you just recently published an article in Forbes magazine warning people of the threat of diseases that are transmitted by ticks. Uh, what kind of, obviously we have a tick problem here in central New York, but how big a problem is it? Yeah, it's a it's a big problem. It's a it's a worsening problem, and you know we can talk about the reasons why that uh, why that is the case. But what we what we really cannot dispute is that we have more ticks. We have more tick species. Those tick species that are capable of uh, transmitting pathogens to um, to people and making those uh, uh, making those people uh, making those people sick. So, uh, and you know it. A lot of people know about Lyme disease, but there are other diseases mm. uh, like things called anaplasmosis or babesiosis. Or these are these are diseases that um, uh, can kill people, uh, and we unfortunately do see deaths every year in in central New York. So uh, uh, it's something to pay attention to. How do I mean? How do you know what's circulating around central New York and that they're infected? These ticks. Right. So well, one of the ways is uh, our our basic science ticks, tick experts, so Dr. Saravan and mm -hmm. Tangamani. Uh, he ran for multiple years a tick testing program. Uh, it was free to anybody who sent him a tick. And what would happen is uh, people would uh, pull a tick off themselves or off a loved one or maybe off the, you know, the family pet. Uh, they would follow the online instructions for how to uh, get the label and package it up and send it in. And then uh, his lab would test that tick uh, against 16 different pathogens, so 16 different um, germs. Uh, and, you know, the four years that he had this program going, he received over 32,000 wow. ticks and 13 different species <laughs> that could make people sick were identified. And about one third of the ticks had at least one um, pathogen oh or, you know, one, one germ that could infect uh, uh, and make people sick. And, and many of them had um, more than one. So that's that's one way that you can do that is having a program like that. Mm -hmm. um, is, is you have a, a, a new program at, at work, right? Um, who should be using that and, and how do they actually do it? Right. So that's that's kind of Dr. Tangamani's uh, um, program rebooted. So, oh. you know, these are pretty. Yeah, these are pretty. It's 2.0. So these mm -hmm. are um, uh, expensive programs. Uh, to run, it was self-funded uh, uh, with with some help um, uh, uh, from our elected officials in that first four years. But then we we had to pause and come up with a new sort of business model. And so it's no longer going to be free. Unfortunately, there's going to be a, a small cost associated with that for the individual who sends the tick in. I will say that the Onondaga um, County uh, Health Commissioner, so Dr. Anderson and the County Executive, uh, Ryan McMahon, they um, have provided support such that if you're from Onondaga County, uh, it's about half half of the cost. Uh, and basically, uh, it's a, uh, you go on to the, you go on to the, the website, um, and it gives you all the instructions that you that you need uh, in terms of how to uh, how to package your tick, how to how to fill out the online form, which I've done it. It takes about uh, two minutes, um, and then uh, yeah, and then how to, how to uh, send it in and and then get your results. And they they turn things around very quickly. Um, so one strategy, another strategy. You have a uh, tick clinical trial that's about to start. How many people are you looking for? How do people sign up for it? Yeah, so this is a, a multi-center trial, meaning we are one of multiple institutions that uh, on the East Coast, uh, Mid-Atlantic and, and the Northeast that are participating. Uh, we're interested in people from 18 to 75 uh, years of age. Uh, we're looking for, you know, about 150 to 200 uh, people. It's basically uh, looking at people, um, so taking a blood sample pre-tick season, so now, uh, and then post-tick uh, season, which would be close to the fall. Uh, and then we're looking for people who were exposed. And and the point of doing that, by looking at immune responses uh, that we would expect when people are exposed um, to the, these ticks and the, and, the, and the germs they transmit. Um, and the point of doing that is trying to identify hot spots within the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic. 
um, uh, because that's going to help inform that when vaccines are available, and, and there's one in advanced clinical trials now, we're, we're part of that development, uh, so that we know where the hotspots are, and that'll help kind of inform where the vaccine rollouts uh, should occur. I'm going to try to sneak this one in. I got about 30 seconds left. Uh, you hosted a, a lecture earlier on today, the guest speaker, one of my favorite journalists, uh, John Franklin, <laughs> yeah. from uh, best yeah. known uh, from his time on HBO's Real Sports. Um, what did you guys talk about? Because it seems like different areas of uh, expertise. Sure. Yeah, no, he's uh, so he's one of our own, right? He went to Syracuse, right. graduated from Syracuse. He was on HBO for 17 years on, on Real Sports. Uh, we talked about the interconnectedness of uh, both uh, journalists and, and people in media and uh, healthcare um, uh, clinicians, doctors, nurses, et cetera. The importance of making personal connections mm. with people, whether it's the subject of a story um, or, or it's your patient or a patient's family. Uh, and we talked about the real importance of, of doing that and why it's important and how to do that. Uh, some different, uh, you know, different techniques. I think it's something that we often forget in the the digital age and phones and telemedicine and uh, you know things that last six seconds and then they're gone and so uh, it was really a very moving because he brought a lot of clips with him from stories that he had done about some incredible people who endured incredible hardships uh, and it was very very inspiring and we're, we're really uh, thankful that that he made the trip well we're always thankful to catch up with you dr. T thanks for your time we'll see you soon thank you see you soon